To see how the Czech nymph method works when fishing for grayling in bigger rivers, we've traveled to Norway. Our destination is Femmansmarka, with such classic waters as Surma, Glöta, Istafortion, and Trysil Elven, here known as the Femund River. After the Second World War, the fishing here was fantastic, and it attracted fishermen from far and wide. But the decades of hard exploitation seriously affected the fish stocks. During the last few years, intensive work has been going on to improve the fishing. Special fly fishing zones have been designated, and a lot of work has been carried out to improve the biotope. Furthermore, Restrictions on catches and an increase in their minimum sizes for grayling and trout caught are being enforced. These measures have allowed the fish to increase in both numbers and average weight throughout the area. Our guide, Jan Terje Os, grew up by the rivers and has been fishing here since childhood. Apart from his hunting and tackle shop, he works with sports fishing tourism in the district. We've agreed to meet Jan Terje at one of his favourite spots, where the river is wide and shallow, and fast, throthing rapids are mixed with slower pools. Hi, Jan Terje. Hi, Jan. Welcome to Norway and the Famines River. Great to be here. The river looks fantastic. So, what kind of fish do you have here in the river? Mostly grayling, but also some trout. Great. So, how is the chances? Is it then a chance to catch a big one? Yeah, you should have the. Yeah. You, you oh, should have great. a good chance. Have you been here long? For a couple of hours. And a catch? Some. Good. Yeah. Very good. It has been a very long trip from Sweden over to here, and I'm very, very curious about this water. Yeah, just go ahead and yeah? try. All oh, right, I'm very curious. Yeah, it'll be great. Jan Terje thinks the fishing will be good, even though we're already in September. He suggests that we move upstream so that we can fish together. This is where the river's main stream presses against one bank and forms classic grayling waters. The grayling can be spread out all over the pool, from the deep central channel and all the way to both banks. We decide to use the medium distance method so that we can reach the lies further out in the river. It's always interesting to see how methods and patterns will work in untried waters you never know what the circumstances will be. In no time at all, we get the first take. The leader jerks and indicates that a grayling has taken one of the three flies on the leader. The fish is about 35 centimeters long and just under the normal size for this river, according to Jan Terrier. The method works well, and the stretch's even speed makes it easy to present the flies drifting freely along the bottom. All the grayling have taken the heavier end fly, which is an imitation of a hydrosicchia larva. This shows that the grayling is a typical bottom fish, often lying deep, preferably sheltered from the current behind a stone, 
or in a hole to save energy. Even though Jan Terrier hasn't tried this method previously, he soon picks it up. Jan Terrier has caught lots of grayling just by the edge of this stream. A lot of small streams run in from the nearby rapids and carry with them drifting larvae and nymphs that had lost their hold in the swift flowing waters beyond. There are plenty of larvae here, both the sedge and the oxygen hungry mayfly nymphs of the Heptagenia variety. The smaller streams serve up food in a concentrated flow, so the fish don't need to move to reach it. If the inlets aren't too shallow, then this is a perfect lie for both grayling and trout. But you have to move carefully, otherwise you might scare the fish in this shallow water. Clumsy, quick and careless movements are a very common reason for the absence of success. It's been a really good day's fishing, and both the short and middle distance methods worked well. But how will this method work in the evening, as the sedge hatch and the grayling focus their attention on the rising sedge pupae? Jan Terrier takes us to a stretch further downstream. The currents are much fiercer, and there aren't any big deep pools. But on one stretch, near land, the current calms down, and it's in this junction between the faster and slower water that we'll look for our grayling, which often lie in the slower waters while hunting in the faster waters beyond. Quite soon, we see the first female sedge swarming over the surface of the water, and soon after, the first of the newly hatched sedges are swimming to land. A lot of sedge species hatch their pupae drifting on the surface, when they leave the bottom and rise to the surface, they have a simple catch for the fish, something the grayling in Feynman's River knows very well. To start with, we fish the edges of the currents with the short distance method, which lets you present the flies exactly along the clearly marked edge. The rising sedge pupae will soon get the fishing going properly. At first, the fish take the end fly, as it's presented deep down near the bottom. But as the number of hatched sedge pupae increases, the grayling more often choose some of the flies on the droppers higher up the leader. The sedge pupae move straight up or diagonally across the current, so a dragging fly is a better imitation of a sedge pupa than a drifting fly. So it's more effective to keep the fly in the current a little longer before making a new cast. It's here the check nymph method shows one of its many advantages. By first letting the flies sink towards the bottom and then giving them a rising movement towards the end of the drift, you provide a very natural imitation of the hatched sedge pupae. Flies with a silver or gold head have worked best during the evening. The glimmer of the metallic heads almost imitates the gas-filled bodies of the sedge pupae, which allows them to rise more quickly to the surface for hatching. This was the thinking behind the work of Theo Baclier, the Dutch fly tire, who was first to put gold heads on his flies. The evening gave us a lot of good grayling in various sizes, 
and almost all of them were taken on an imitation of a rising sedge pupa. Today, together with the fisheries bailiff Jan Nordvolen, we're going to explore the outlet of Galt Lake, where the Femund River starts its course. Galt Hudet, as the place is known, is classic water, which has long been a favourite of fly fishermen. A special fly fishing zone has been allocated from the outlet and a good bit downstream. Jan tells us that a lot of really big grayling have been caught here over the years, and catches over one kilo are common. We decide to move downstream to the lower stretch of the fly fishing zone, and then fish our way back up to the lake using upstream fishing techniques. The river's very different here, and the currents in the main channel are fast and heavy, while along the edges of the channel you can see several smaller but clearly visible lies to fish. The mayfly nymph imitation, together with a couple of sedge larvae, can stay on the leader. This combination covers a large part of a grayling's menu in these waters. The main channel is fished first, using the long distance method. The first take comes at once, and a smaller grayling has taken the middle fly, a jig nymph. The next grayling takes the nymph at the edge of the main channel as well. The mayfly nymphs are moving and the grayling are definitely starting to eat them. The flies don't often drift very far before the nymph is taken, a sure sign the grayling are choosing to take the nymphs on their way up to the surface. Near the edge, the stream is still deep, but much slower than out in the main channel. A lot of the drifting mayfly nymphs get gathered up here, and if there's enough, then the fish here will start to feed. Because the flies need to be presented using short drifts along the edge of the main channel, it's important that they sink quickly to the right level. Otherwise, the flies will be presented above the fish, and that isn't as effective. So we change the tippet for a thinner dimension and change the end fly for a heavier imitation. The thinner tippet presents a smaller surface to the current and cuts through the water better than a thicker one. The take is careful, hardly noticeable, but the fish feels strong and heavy in the current. The grayling lifts his large back fin to brace himself against the current and offers a real fight where the result isn't at all a foregone conclusion. This grayling also took the jig nymph, which seems to be the fly of the day. The pockets along the edge of the current are fished systematically using the middle distance method and a fast sinking end fly, together with two mayfly nymphs as droppers. The combination is a success, with a new grayling taking at every new place we try.
It's easy to forget the old rule. Always start by fishing the spots closest to land before wading out to fish in deeper waters. Here, close to the edge, is the deepest part of this stretch of the river. So you can assume that there are grayling there. But to avoid scaling the fish in the shallow water, you can choose to start fishing from the middle of the river into the bank. The river behind me is quite deep and the fish standing very close towards the bottom. And uh, the traditional Czech style tackle would do just fine there. But uh, I will go over and try a little bit further upstream where the water is a lot shallower and the fish are extremely shy. Add a bright sun as well and you will have a really, really tricky situation. So I will try with the French style tackle instead together with two little nymphs. We'll see if that will do instead. You notice the take when the coloured line in the middle of the leader jerks. It can be hard at first to see the difference between what's really a take and what's a snag. But after you've landed a couple of fish, you won't be mistaken. The take shows itself in an obvious, quick movement, which is clearly visible. The fishing in Femund's Marker and the Femund River has been quite fantastic and the Czech nymph method works just as well here as in the Czech Republic and Sweden. The Czech nymphing technique is a great technique to do well in all kinds of rivers and streams all over the world, both grayling and brown trout. And uh, it's one of my favorite techniques as I really enjoy to practice whenever I can. So, it's time for me and Bo to go home. There are lots of interesting and exciting techniques to be tried out when fly fishing. Some more difficult to learn than others. Everyone can learn the Czech nymph method and you've seen it used successfully in Norway, Sweden and the Czech Republic. Now it's up to you to try the method and adapt it for your own home waters. Good luck! <laughs>